Alright, let's take a look at this basic refrigeration cycle. All mechanical refrigeration will have four basic components. The compressor, the condenser, the metering device, and the evaporator. The compressor creates the high and low sides of the system and moves refrigerant through the system. The condenser rejects heat. The metering device acts as a dividing point in the system creating the high and low pressure sides. The evaporator absorbs heat from the medium to be cooled. Refrigerant leaves the compressor as a highly superheated vapor. It immediately begins to reject heat until it condenses in the condenser. It rejects heat, condenses into a liquid, and then takes on subcooling. and enters the metering device as a subcooled liquid. It leaves the metering device as a 75% liquid and a 25% vapor. It enters the evaporator, absorbs heat, and boils to a vapor. It leaves the evaporator as a cool superheated vapor. It enters the compressor as a superheated vapor, absorbs heat from the motor windings, is compressed by the piston and again enters the discharge line to go through the refrigeration cycle again. Refrigerant leaves the compressor as a highly superheated gas. It immediately begins to reject sensible heat. It enters the condenser, continues to reject heat, a rejecting sensible heat, and then about the midpoint in the condenser, some of the refrigerant vapor begins to condense into a liquid. At this point, it is rejecting latent heat. Latent heat is heat that's rejected during a change of state. 
near the end of the condenser we have a 100 percent liquid and it rejects sensible heat and as it leaves the condenser we can measure this sensible heat and tell how much sensible heat we have rejected by taking a subcooling reading. The refrigerant enters the metering device as a subcooled liquid. It leaves the metering device as a 75% liquid and a 25% vapor. It immediately begins to boil. It boils, rejecting latent heat. This is the heat that's rejected during the change of state. And it absorbs heat, and it absorbs heat, and it absorbs heat. It begins to more and more, it becomes a vapor less and less liquid and then at a point approximately 90 percent of the way through the evaporator it begin becomes a pure vapor it now begins to take on superheat that is a sensible heat above the evaporation point It leaves the evaporator as a superheated vapor. Enters the compressor shell. It absorbs heat from the motor windings. It absorbs heat from the crank, the piston, the metal parts inside of the compressor. Then on the downstroke, this superheated vapor is drawn into the piston cylinder and on the upstroke it absorbs the heat of compression and the heat of compression is it squeezes the molecule so tight that the friction generates heat and it leaves through the discharge valve as a highly superheated vapor. Now let's add some numbers to this. Before I can add some numbers to this process, we have to determine what type of refrigerant we have, the type of metering device we have, the outdoor and indoor ambient temperatures and the sear rating of the piece of refrigeration equipment we're working with. In this example, I want to use R22, an outdoor temperature of 95 degrees Fahrenheit an indoor temperature of 75 degrees Fahrenheit at 55 percent relative humidity and we're going to be using a 10 sear efficiency rating. So let's start back up here again. On a 95 degree day, refrigerant would be leaving our compressor at approximately 210 degrees Fahrenheit. It immediately begins to reject heat. It leaves the compressor through the discharge line and enters the top of the condenser. All along the way, it's rejecting 
sensible heat. See there's no change of state taking place. It's a highly superheated vapor. It leaves at 210 degrees and it immediately begins to reject heat. We have 210 degrees rejecting into a 95 degree day. We can readily reject heat. It rejects heat 200, 195, 190, 180, and it continues to reject heat until about halfway through the condenser it rejects heat down to 125 degrees. This is going to be our saturation point. This is the point at which some of the refrigerant vapor begins to change into a liquid. For a 10 seer system, on a 95 degree day, we can determine this number by adding 30 degrees to the outdoor ambient temperature. Our refrigerant will begin to condense back into a liquid at 125 degrees. This will have a corresponding high side pressure of 278 PSIG. Guarantee, it's a guarantee, it's the pressure temperature relationship. When we have a change of state taking place, we will have a corresponding pressure to relate to it. So when I put my gauges on, if this system's operating correctly, my high side gauge on a 95 degree day with a 10 seer system would read 278 PSIG. As we go through the system, we now begin to reject latent heat. Latent heat is heat that is rejected or absorbed during the change of state. Now see, although we're rejecting heat, the temperature will remain the same as long as the change of state is taking place. We're rejecting BTUs. We're cooling the refrigerant vapor. It's changing state and as long as it's changing state, its temperature and its pressure will remain the same. Once we have no more vapor, there's no more change of state taking place, we can now reject sensible heat. Now, if I was to have my gauges attached and I put a thermometer lead here at the exit of the condenser and I met, took a measured temperature of 105 degrees I could say that I have 20 degrees of subcooling 105 subtracted from 125 gives me 20 degrees of subcooling this is an indication of just how much refrigerant is in the system. 20 degrees of subcooling is a normal amount of subcooling for this type of system. It enters the fixed bore metering device. There's a couple of different types of metering devices that are used. The one in this example is a fixed bore metering device. It's nothing more than a piston 
or a tiny hole. We often refer to it as an orifice. It's very tiny hole, a little bit smaller around than a pencil lid. It enters one side of this metering device as 105 degree pure liquid. When it leaves this side, when it leaves the metering device, it immediately flashes to a 25% vapor and a 75% liquid. That's because the pressure immediately changes. The metering device acts as a dividing point in the system, creating the high pressure side and the low pressure side. With a 75 degree indoor temperature, I can subtract 35 degrees and that will give me a 40 degree operating temperature. All the refrigerant is boiling at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And I know it's going to boil at 40 degrees Fahrenheit because if I attach my low side gauge, I would see that it's operating at approximately 70 PSIG. It's a guarantee. R22 at 70 PSIG will allow the refrigerant to boil at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It immediately flashes to a vapor and begins to boil, absorbing heat from the conditioned area. The refrigerant is boiling. It's absorbing latent heat because there's a change of state taking place. It's absorbing heat, but there's no change in the temperature. It boils, 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 and along about 90% of the way through the evaporator, all of the liquid has boiled to a vapor. We have a pure vapor leaving, and from here to the exit of the evaporator, it begins to take on superheat. Superheat is the temperature, it's sensible heat that is gained above the boiling point. If I come to the end of my evaporator and I attach a thermometer, a digital thermometer lead, and it reads 52 degrees Fahrenheit, I would subtract 40 from the 52, that gives me 12 degrees of superheat. We call this refrigeration insurance because if I have superheat, if I have 12 degrees of superheat, that means there's absolutely no liquid left in this line to boil to a vapor refrigeration insurance because this piston driven compressor cannot compress a liquid. It has to compress a vapor. You can't compress a liquid. If you try to compress a liquid, all kinds of bad things happen. On a good day, your compressor would just lock up and quit running. On a bad day, it might break a valve or bust the crank. So let's go through this again. When the refrigerant leaves the compressor as a 210 degree, highly superheated vapor, it rejects sensible heat. Sensible heat, it goes from 210 degrees down to 200, 190, 180, 175, 160. This is all sensible heat that's being rejected because we have no change of state taking place. Once we get down to 125 degrees, 
we now begin to see some of the highly superheated vapor change into droplets of liquid refrigerant. At this point, it begins to reject latent heat. The latent heat is rejected. The temperature does not change. It's 125 degrees all along the way. Change of state taking place. At 278 PSIG, the refrigerant will condense back into a liquid at 125 degrees and its temperature will not change. We're rejecting BTUs, but there's no change in the measured temperature. Once we're about 90% of the way through the condenser, there's no more vapor left to reject, um, no more vapor left to condense into a liquid. We have a pure liquid. It now begins to reject sensible heat. This is heat that we can measure with a thermometer. It rejects heat, rejects heat. We're going from 125 down to 120, 115, 110, 105. It leaves the condenser as a subcooled liquid at 105 degrees, it enters the metering device as a pure liquid. It leaves the metering device and immediately flashes to a 25% vapor because of the change in pressure. It absorbs heat, it absorbs heat, all of this is latent heat. It absorbs heat. It boils, it boils, it boils, it boils to a vapor. And approximately 90% of the way through our evaporator, it becomes a pure vapor. At this point, it absorbs sensible heat. So now we're going from 40 degrees, 42, 43, 44, 45, 50, it leaves the evaporator at 52 degrees. We subtract our boiling temperature from our measured line temperature of 52 degrees Fahrenheit, and that gives us 12 degrees. We can say that we have 12 degrees of superheat. It travels down the suction line, enters the compressor, as a superheated vapor, it absorbs heat from the components within the compressor. On the downstroke of the piston, it is drawn in through the suction valve into my piston cylinder. And on the upstroke, it squeezes the refrigerant vapor so tight that it creates a heat of compression from the friction of the molecules rubbing against themselves. It leaves this cylinder as a highly superheated vapor and begins the refrigeration cycle once again. And hopefully your air conditioner or heat pump will go through this cycle for 15 years without fail. This is called the high side. What you see in red is considered the high side of the system. You can literally draw a line through it. High pressure side low pressure side I would have my blue hose connected to the low pressure side I'd have my red hose attached to the high pressure side
my refrigeration gauges would read pressures and temperatures. I would have a digital thermometer attached to the liquid line leaving the condenser to give me a measured liquid temperature, here in this case 105. At the exit of the evaporator, I would have another digital thermometer attached to the refrigerant line to give me a measured temperature of 52 degrees Fahrenheit. So once again, this is the basic refrigeration cycle. The most basic refrigeration cycle I can give you is one that applies to a simple air conditioner. But keep in mind, these four basic components, the compressor, condenser, metering device, and evaporator, can literally be applied to any mechanical refrigeration from the smallest window unit to the largest chiller system. Your refrigerator at home has a compressor, a condenser, a metering device, and an evaporator. Your window unit that hangs out the window of your house to cool it off has a compressor, a condenser, a metering device, and an evaporator. Your heat pump has a compressor, condenser, metering device, evaporator. Your dehumidifier has a compressor, condenser, metering device, and evaporator. The largest chiller system sitting on the roof of the largest factory downtown, a 300-ton chiller, will have a compressor, a condenser, a metering device, and an evaporator. I hope this presentation has been of benefit to you, and I will be preceded. I will follow this up with some other presentations with different sear ratings, different refrigerants. Thank you.